you know, I got to put some things in X and O wise. Um, and now looking back on it, uh, it's even more beneficial than we even anticipated because we have just been uh, absolutely riddled with injuries and um, illnesses since the beginning of practice. Um, we have been going pretty much the whole first week was pretty much all four on four basketball. Um, you know, we were still able to get a lot of things accomplished last week, but uh, we are kind of in a uh, slow down pattern at this point because I don't, you know, we, we probably got in a third or fourth of the things we need to get in uh, during the Spain trip. We probably got in about a third or fourth that we need to get in before our first game and uh, we're still uh, banged up, still a little sick. But I like our team. I like our team. Once we get everybody healthy, I, I, I like uh, the competitiveness of our team. I like the makeup of our team. I think we've got uh, uh, more pieces uh, than we've had in a while. Um, you know, the injury to Brian Williams uh, um, is, uh, you know, injuries are never good. But when you look at a young man that was our best defender, uh, our most uh, uh, high energy player uh, on our basketball team. That's never, you know, that's never good. But hey, it's part of the game, and uh, uh, we'll have to have other guys step up and you know, uh, and try to fill some of his uh, some of his role as far as rebounding defensively and uh, his energy level. But um, you know, I think everybody on our team from last year has improved. Markel Brown had a great summer, and he's continued on that through the preseason. Has looked terrific. Uh, um, LeBron Nash uh, seems to have learned a lot from last season and um, you know he is much better at this point than he was last year. Um, Michael Cobbins, uh, we're still, uh, he's gained some weight but we're still obviously encouraging him to eat as much as he can <laughs> and uh, continue to keep the weight on uh, is our big challenge for Michael. Uh, but we're looking for much more uh, from Michael than he gave us last year. We're looking for much more production scoring, shot blocking, rebounding. Um, things like that. Um, you know, Socek, Mark Socek might be the most improved player on our basketball team. He still has a long way to go, but he is extremely improved as far as his physicality, as far as him understanding what he needs to do to get on the court. Uh, he's been a little bit riddled with injury uh, in the first week of practice, but uh, has been fit about 50 percent. Um, and then you add in all the new guys, uh, you know, the Marcus Marfield Forte, Kamari Murphy, uh, Kirby Gardner, all these guys are still just in the learning process. And uh, most of those guys, except for Kirby and Kamari, have, been, have not, you know, uh, Marcus and Phil did not practice last week and still not practicing this week. So. <coughs> About Marcus, you know, he hasn't been able to do much later. His his impact, the way he goes about playing the game, just how beneficial is his impact on everybody else who's been here? For you know, Marcus is, uh, as I call it, kind of an old school player. Uh, Marcus, uh, today's day and age, especially if you come out of high school and you're a top 20, 25 player in the country, it's usually based on scoring. It's you know, most of those guys. It's all about them and. Uh, Marcus Smart's just the opposite. He is totally consumed with winning. He's totally consumed with whatever to do whatever I ask him to do. Uh, he his um, priorities are to try to make everybody around him better, uh, and uh, he has made an instant impact on our team as he would on any team. Um, you know, it's just his attitude and his approach to the game. Um, He's involved in practice. He, he, he practiced the first weekend. And um, he's just involved in every play, from rebounding to assists to loose balls um, to leadership, being vocal. Um, you know, he just has no quit to him. He, you know, he has no quit. He's always making the extra effort. He's always trying to do something to help his team win or help his team win a drill. Um, he's just the ultra ultimate competitor the ultimate competitor but yeah he, he's made an instant impact on everybody we you know there's not too many freshmen can do that uh, and not be especially the way he goes about it leadership wise there's not too many freshmen that can come and do that with a with a team that's returning a lot of players and not kind of be resented and our players have really embraced uh, uh, you know Marcus and you know what he's all about Because his skill set was something that you were missing, right? Yeah, you know we've, you know we we had some leadership ability from 
obviously some great leadership from Keaton Page, and that was a concern for me. Um, I thought there was a, and I still think there's uh, that we can replace the 17 points that Keaton gave us. It's not going to be easy, um, but my biggest concern was can you replace the leadership that Keaton uh, gave us last season and it developed over four years as a starter and things like that. Marcus Smart has kind of picked up a lot of that. Markel Brown's done a great job of that. Um, but Marcus is, uh, uh, yeah, he, he bring, and it's a little bit different than Keaton that, not that Keaton didn't play hard, but Marcus does it by almost exactly how hard he plays. And I think it goes to your question. I think it's contagious to the other guys. When you play as hard as he does, it almost, you know, exposes you if you don't play hard. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, you, we've had to watch it how much you, you know, you sit there and you could praise Marcus a lot uh, and practice and do some things and show guys film, but, you know, you gotta, you got to watch it a little bit. But indirectly, I'm always telling our guys, guys, you've got great examples out here how to play hard. Ever you got, please follow without even mentioning his name. Uh, and, I, you know, uh, but it's also easy to talk about a guy uh, you know, I've coached guys who uh, who played extremely hard, but still want to sh still may not be the, uh, as unselfish as Marcus is. They play hard, but they're still trying to shoot. Marcus uh, could go a whole practice without shooting, and I could care less. Uh, so it's easy to praise a guy who, who everybody around him knows he's just trying to win. I mean, they they're they're there's no way anyone could have a problem with Marcus Smart. It's just you know because he's not selfish in any manner. Um, so it's easy to coach a guy like that. Coach, do you find his body and, and physicality and his skill set unique for a point guard? And would you, who, who, who does he remind you of as a point guard? Anybody? Um, you know, that's a good question. You know, uh, we've uh, Marcus had played in high school. He, play, he brought the ball to court, but I don't know if you would call him the point guard when they were at Marcus High School uh, and, and won two state championships. Uh, Phil Forte played some point. Marcus brought it up some. They had another fellow on there that played some point. Uh, you know, we looked at our team uh, and uh, thought that would be the best position for him on our team. Now, would that be his best position on somebody else's team? I don't know. But for our basketball team, and I think even for the next level a little bit, this is an area because he can play any position now. Let's not if you, he can play and and would if I told him you're going to play center tomorrow, he'd say okay. Just tell me what to do. He would do it. But for our basketball team, it's the best position for our team. Uh, he has great leadership ability. He's extremely unselfish. A good ball handler, and I like. Um, I've not coached anybody with his size um, and physicality point guard spot. We're doing some things I've never done from the point guard position if we can get him out on the court and keep practicing it. Uh, some things that um, I think could cause some other people some problems. Uh, him being 6'4", six, 6'4 four, six, four and, and you know, 220, two whatever he is. I mean, he's a big boy now. Um, but who does he compare? We've talked a lot about this. His body would be comparable. His game is not. His body would be compared to like a Chauncey Billups type point guard. Chauncey Billups was a big, strong point guard. Um, you know, Mark Jackson was one of these big, strong point guards. Uh, not a guy that's going to just beat you with speed and all that. He is quick, uh, you know, but uh, his understanding of the game uh, is, is, is very good. Um, he's, you know, uh, he's he's got some things he's got to work on from that, but you know he he, he forces things at times. Uh, you know, a lot of times he likes to make that spectacular play at times when it could be a little bit simpler um, and things like that. So there's obviously a lot of room for improvement. Marcus got to quit relaxing off the ball defensively, on the ball defensively. He's uh, very very good, um, but um, you know it, it's an interesting point guard position. It is with him being his size. Um, and what some of the things we're going to try to do to get him in the post a lot, you know, uh, with this basketball team, you know, uh, we're going to get up a lot of three, probably more than we even probably did last year. But with that said, we're going to have to feed the post more than we did last season as well. Um, we can't just uh, we 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 don't want to get caught up living and dying with jump shots, uh, and we did that a lot last year. Now, we've got to get post production out of Michael Cobbins. Um, uh, Kamari Murphy's coming along, but I don't suspect he'll be uh, a great inside presence this season. He can make, he'll score some points because he's got a nice ins uh, inside pivot jump shot game, 15-foot game. 
uh, slashing game Murphy does, even though he's going to play a four and five jerk in the last day or so, has shown us that um, he's lost about 45, 50 pounds over the summer, and I think that's really helped him uh, around the basket a little bit. And he's still just practicing maybe 35 uh, percent of the time in practice, 30 maybe, but he has shown some glimpses of. Uh, uh, maybe be able to score around a little bit around the basket, even though he gave us none last year. He gave us none last year. He's probably my doctor. I'm seeing my hip doctor. Everybody seems to be injured around here. Um, um, but uh, we're going to invert the court a lot. You know, we, and that's the word we're using a lot. We're going to we're going to send our big guys out on the perimeter and go post. Marcus Smart and LeBron Nash. I'm going to try as much as I can. Now that's changed with uh, Brian Williams getting hurt. My whole mindset was to try to keep LeBron Nash on the perimeter and keep him at the twos and the threes. This whole, as much as I could, with him having the possibility of playing some four. Now that's changed a little bit. He's going to play some more four, but his main priority will be the two and the three. Um, so we're going to get caught posting him. And you know, we still thought that. Even when Brian was playing, we still thought the you know, teams might put their big man on Brian. But now we're going to be going with a more conventional lineup um, with three guards and playing uh, Murphy and Cobbins and Socek and Jurek at the fours and fives. And those are all guys that are six eight or bigger. Uh, with um, Ola Kimi uh, and um, and LB being able to slide to the four, Ola Kimi a lot more at the four as well uh, than than. Um, than LB, but we're going to invert the court a lot and try to get those guys inside um, and, and feed them the ball on the side and try to get some higher percentage shots. But, uh, you know, we came out of Spain averaging against mid-major competition, uh, against solid mid-major, not great mid-major, but good. We averaged 87 points a game. Um, so we, we definitely want to score more than we did last year, for sure. Uh, and we're, we're, we're obviously putting an emphasis on pushing the pace. Any idea at all about John Paul's situation with Minnesota? None. Zero. You know as much. I, I, none. I don't. Uh, I'm just hoping because things always good news. And we you know, obviously that becomes even more important with Brian being out. I mean, huge. You know, um, uh, it was very. You know, at first when Brian got hurt, I thought, well, you know, kind of initial reaction was, oh, he might be out a month or two. And I said, all right, either way it goes with JP, we'll kind of. Exchange at Christmas time, maybe or something. If JP didn't get, but I'm, I'm very optimistic. Uh, I know the case of JP. I know the whole case. I know the other cases that have been uh, uh, the guys have been granted semesters uh, or years. Uh, a year. We're just asking for a semester and basically a semester that they lost last year. So uh, you're talking about a young man who's done nothing but excel in the classroom. Uh, never uh, been a problem. Um, He's done everything. He had ex extenuating circumstances uh, b because his clock started early. Uh, there were several extenuating circumstances that have been that uh, that um, that are basis for him getting his semester. If I read them right in the rule book, uh, things like that. Um, so uh, we're very optimistic uh, that he'll get it. But you just you never know. You never know. So, but no, we don't. We we haven't, we haven't heard anything. So. Anything else for Coach Ford? So. That was easy. All right, thanks, guys.